Okay, Bob, I just don't want to do one more sound check. Can you hear me? One more sound check. Terrific. Listen, I want to thank you, Bob, for that wonderful introduction, and I appreciate uh, Trader Kingdom, and I appreciate ICE and your continual commitment for trader education and presenting these events for free. So I, I really want to thank you for that. Okay, now let's uh, get through the disclaimer here. Remember, trading financial stocks, instruments, uh, futures, options, anything is extremely risky. Only trade with money you can afford to lose. Past results do not guarantee future results. Please consult a licensed professional prior to trading using real money. Paper trade to learn any new concepts. And I know a guy who's just been trading for 50 years, and anytime there's a new concept, he paper trades it religiously. Okay, uh, so Bob mentioned my background. I'm not going to go over that again. I will let you know that I started the newsletter, and then um, I decided to expand. I do a, a morning uh, note to clients, and I'm offering this free to anyone who's interested. Um, just go to hitthemarktrading.com, go to the contacts page, and you can sign up. Basically, it's a very brief morning email. I look at the overnight charts. I look at the overnight uh, fundamental news. And uh, I just draft up a quick little email, send it out, and especially if there's anything we should be looking forward uh, to trading as day traders because my client base is both swing and day traders. Okay, now what is momentum trading? Let's just get right into this thing. Uh, this first slide always looks a little funny. Momentum trading is the art of spotting a market ready to move, selecting a trade, entering the trade with confidence, and utilizing predetermined exit points. So momentum trading builds off a firm understanding of support and resistance, along with areas prices attracted toward moving. Okay. Uh, hello, there's my boot camp ad. I just thought that was at the end. Um, Remember that momentum trading is trading directionally up or down, riding the price wave rather than reacting to what might happen. Now usually momentum trading is accompanied by a price oscillator. And we can use momentum trading for intraday, short term, holding a few days, or even momentum trading for weeks. Okay. So what I want to do first is talk about how do we determine trend. And a lot of the, this may seem very basic to you, but trust me, it's your foundation. So we use a weekly chart to see the big picture. We use a daily chart for tactical entries. Alternatively, your day trader is going to use the daily chart for big picture, glancing at the weekly, but then use as a short-term chart for tactical entries. As a general rule, the more volatile the market, the smaller the time frame chart you want to use. Now we know markets can move in three directions, up, down, and sideways. So if markets are sideways, we're greatly challenged unless the range is large. So it's really imperative to find moving markets. And this means future traders must learn to expand their horizon at times monitoring other futures. I mean there's sometimes when the Russell 2000 which we're going to look at extensively today well if the Russell 2000 is not doing much of anything moving in very very tight range you need to know well what's sugar doing? You can certainly day trade sugar. Uh, coffee has been on an absolute tear. Uh, we're getting positioned, uh, we're monitoring cotton very closely. We're looking for a trend change will soon emerge in cotton. Okay, now let's get back to the program. Um, to identify trend, we're going to bracket price with trend lines. I'm going to show you the weekly, daily, and intraday chart. And just to understand, to keep it simple, understand that price will bang back and forth between the trend lines, okay? So here's the weekly TF, and I want to thank uh, Ninja Trader for the charts. Thank you very much. Uh, just to let you know, this moving average I use is 34 exponential moving average. A lot of people use the 20, a lot of people use the 50, I like the 34. 
and although I'm not going to review it today I do measure the angle up here at the right I do measure the angle of this 34 exponential moving average but as you look at what when we put the lines on price you know up and down my goodness it really presents the roadmap doesn't it it really shows you how all price does is bang just bang up bang down bang up bang down bang up oh my pointer <laughs> I always forget the pointer price just bangs down up down up down so when you can draw the lines suddenly your your mind begins to assimilate okay um, Wes I've got a chart on my other screen over here so I'm not sure what uh, why you don't see a chart now I'm not going to go into the CCI yet we're going to get to that. Here's daily chart. Again, I just draw the lines. If I can connect three bodies, I just draw this and then I extend, hit the extend button and run that line out. Okay? And once again, what what happens is that the brain is able to connect the dots. Okay? That's what you want. You've got to make this simple on the brain and reduce the decision points. So here we go. We're up at the top. Come down to a moving average. Okay, come back up. Where are we going? Up to the top. Oh, we're falling. How low is low? To the bottom. Why? Because we got this channel line. Uh, going up. Where are we going? Up to the top. And over and over and over again. So when we come up to the top, what do we do? When the Russell 2000 is at the top, well, guess what? We start uh, working with some uh, uh, options. Some... Uh, Russell 2000 options and and you know expecting that more than likely we're going to drop gosh how can we say that well how much evidence do you need to see this is the magic of just drawing these trend lines I love it okay now for the day trader what I like to do is I like to see well what is the trend on a small time frame chart now I will not trade off a 15 minute chart but I will certainly have it and look at it in the morning and say okay mm -hmm. and I'm gonna just draw my lines I'm just gonna draw my lines okay just like that drew this and this and I would probably draw one like this too let me show you I'm gonna try to get fancy here let's see draw nope bear with me so I would probably have something drawn like this okay first thing and when these lines are broken it is meaningful okay because the same patterns that the day traders are using, I'm sorry, that the, uh, the swing traders are using, they show up on our charts as well as day traders. This looks like it would be like an ascending wedge type deal. The main thing is when the line is broken, you want to be aware of it. And also I make extensive use of the floor pivots. I don't guess they're called floor pivots anymore because there's no floor. The pivot points, I make extensive use of this in day trading. Okay. Again, we're not going to talk about the indicator just yet. Just want to impress on you what it means to draw lines on a chart. Okay? Okay, whoops. So a lot of times at the end of the day, you can draw the lines out. And in the morning when you wake up, the same lines are there. Extend those lines and just wait for a break. Wait for um, price to resolve the issue. Okay, let's roll on. Now, support and resistance is absolutely huge in momentum trading. Again, I'm talking about momentum trading. Now, if you, you know, you show me a chart and you're pulling your hair out because 
the indexes if they've been really tight and they're not hardly moving and you're saying gosh I'm just losing money trying to day trade this again I would say well where is the evidence that there's momentum so you must have a moment a, a moving market so widen your horizon start testing on other products okay now let's talk about oscillators I gotta get rid of that pencil oscillators all derive their power from price movement okay and for this reason you really need to understand how to read price action at support and resistance areas the oscillator then provides a feel-good factor a trigger point for entry now everyone has their personal favorite in the beginning years I used slow stochastics MACD Williams percent R and RSI and maybe you top it all off with the Bollinger Bands when they all add up what do you do you take the trade well at present I use just one indicator after years of simplifying I'm sorry after a year of trading and my desire to simplify believe you me when you see as many charts as I've seen you you understand that in a moving market anything works you've got to you've really got to own that concept okay in a moving market anything works and the big secret in the in the industry about oscillators is that most all of the oscillators are a simple variation on the same theme price moving back and forth through or to a moving average okay let's move on now we talked about this in a strong momentum market I don't care what you do I have placed in some of these webinars the day of the webinar I just throw up a chart and put a 7 and a 21 moving average simple moving average and boom it's a great it works if the markets moving okay um, remember that in a tight range market every single price oscillator is going to use its per, lose its predictive value now obviously I don't have any time for uh, monitoring the other stuff that's out there and I, I don't have a problem with the other stuff but it's too complex for me because in a, as a day trader you've got to be quick you've got to be able to read and reduce the decision points so I do not look at the trend I do not look at the tricks I do not look at the market profile I do not believe in all that other stuff because it just does not speak to me it is not simple and I'm talking like uh, very popular with market profile people that work with that or, or work, work with Elliott Wave I really tip my hat off to you for me it doesn't do one thing now the commodity channel index was created by Donald Lambert I met Mr. Lambert and um, basically in a moving market the CCI is shown to lead price wow how much is that worth but I don't want you to take my word for it and I always refer people to the same page in technical analysis of the financial markets now this is one of the uh, required reading for anyone who wants to become a chartered market uh, technician just notice here now he only spends about a page on the CCI if that it's this last line notice that the CCI turns before prices at each top and bottom the default length is 20 days okay I like that this man puts it in print I spent about a year convincing myself and I believe it so I'm an evangelist so let's look at the CCI right the CCI turns price turns right the CCI comes up price comes up okay now it's a price oscillator all you need to know is that we are comparing price with a very simple moving average over a selected time span that's it nothing special mister Lambert suggested a 20-day period 
Others have modified Lambert's suggestion for intraday use using a 14 or uh, even a 6 and a 5 period. Okay. Now I do use the 14 for the intraday. Now how do you calculate CCI? Thankfully most all of your charting platforms have this task automated. All you do is define the time period. I'm going to show you the calculation but if I look at this too long I turn into a uh, I don't know my eyes cross and I just lose it. All I want you to know is the CCI is plotted on a histogram. I'm going to show that to you. The zero line is going to represent major support and resistance and the 100 line and the 150 line is going to represent minor support and resistance. So here we go. Here's these beautiful charts again. So again, uh, this is today's action. The zero line is major support and resistance. So here's our CCI histogram. All right, zero line, major support and resistance. What else could we say? Well, this must be where the price hits the 20. Now, what else do you have? The 100 line, minor support and resistance, minus 100 line. 150 line, minus 150 line. The plus and minus 150 lines are very important to us. So what we're going to focus on in the limited time that I have with you today is the diagonal trend line break on the CCI. You know, it's very powerful. Start drawing the line from plus or minus 150. And here's what you need to ask yourself before you jump in, taking a trade. If you cannot draw a diagonal trend line, do you really want to take the trade? Okay. Now, boy, I know people are looking at this and saying, how can he trade with nothing else on the chart? Hmm. Moving average and one indicator only? Hmm. Okay, here's our diagonal trend line break. Now, this is a weekly chart. We draw it, we start drawing it up. The only requirement is we touch somewhere. So, here's our touch, and we just extend it out. So, this diagonal trend line break, and we see price coming down. Okay. Now, this line was not here. I want three touches to the candle body, you know. I guess I could have drawn it, but uh, really I would have felt better about drawing it from this point right here. All right, one, two, three. So, diagonal trend line break, and boom, up, right? Up. Diagonal trend line break here, we go down. Diagonal trend line break here, we go up. So, this is swing traders, you know, swing traders love this. The, oh, by the way, um, I tend to get so into these presentations. I want you to please hold your questions. You can write them down, but I would really prefer you hold the questions toward the end because I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. I'll answer every single question. All right, here's the daily chart. We draw. Okay, this is a different little pattern here. Okay, I don't have time to talk about it. It's called the failure swing. And, uh, you know, break this, and uh, it's a reversal, and it, price goes up. So here's diagonal trend line break, price comes down. Diagonal trend line break, price goes up. Okay? Diagonal trend line break, price goes down to the moving average. Diagonal trend line break, there's our, there's our touch. See the touch? So I can draw that line. What else could we have done? I'll show you. Come here, line. We could have done something like this. Okay. We could have done something like that. 
there it goes. Let me draw that again. There it is. Okay. Um, so you're going to be able to draw these things a couple times. Now here we have this uh, reversal pattern again, but we certainly have reasons why we would not take that trade. Um, I, I can spend an entire hour just on this failure swing. But the trend trader looks for the diagonal trend line break, and boom, up we go. Where are we going? To the top. Why should I expect this is going to go any higher? You know, when it comes to being simple, I'm, I'm pretty simple. And the rule is this line's going to hold until it doesn't. Okay? So let's move on. Intraday. Now I'm going to go into this pretty hot and heavy because I know a lot of people really like to do the day trading thing. And, and for day trading, let me assure you, the Russell 2000, you're going to get good bang for your buck. Okay? That's what you want. You want movement. Now, same methodology. We just adjust our CCI to the 14. Smaller time frames in moving markets with a good range. Extensive use of floor pivots, pivot points to launch and exit trades. I would like to suggest if you are struggling or if you are not seeing the results you would like to see, trade during the rush hour instead of all day. Trade that first hour and a half. Okay? Sure, you're going to get these lunchtime moves, but uh, we tend to see a movement uh, first hour and a half and then, oh, about the last hour and a half. The, the objective here is to keep your brain, your, your brain fresh instead of bored. So, here is the TF 10 range bar chart. Now, I'm totally enamored with the 10 range bar chart. I have traded the 512 tick for years. So this is also a good choice, the 512 tick. Now, I'm going to show you first the diagonal trend line break. Then I'm going to show you where the entry is. Then I'm going to show you where to put your protective stop. And then I'm going to show you exits. Here we go. Diagonal trend line break. All right. Oh, let me get to the one that shows the trades. Okay. Um, we're going to look at the. Uh, these these are the primarily the two strongest patterns that I use, but there are other patterns. Okay. And today we're talking about diagonal trend line break. Okay. I guess I want to remind you of this before. <laughs> Just remember to draw the line starting at 150 and minus 150. Better mo trades are in the market showing momentum. 20 period CCI for daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, 14 period for the intraday and below 60 minutes. Now let me see this thing. Here's our entries. We're talking about diagonal trend line break with the trend. So here's our diagonal trend line break. And that means that we broke it here, and this is our trigger bar, right here. Now, here's diagonal trend line break here. Okay. Now keep in mind this is early in the morning before the market opens. Diagonal trend line break here. Here's an entry bar. Diagonal trend line break here. Oh, look, one. Two, that's a that's a bonus. Basically, the CCI went down, up, down, up, finally broke through. There's our entry. Diagonal trend line break. There's our entry. Diagonal trend line break. There's our entry. Diagonal trend line break. There's our entry. Okay. Now let's roll on. This is the most important part of the presentation. And, and, you know, I have had traders come to me uh, from portfolio managers to
people who simply do this as a hobby and have no intention of using real money. I've, I've taught so many people. And the number one problem is not entries. Entries is the easiest part of this business. The number one problem is the protective stop. So I want you to please pay attention. If you are working on daily charts, place your stop below support if you're going to go long or below the trigger bar low. Okay. If you're working with daily charts, place your stop above resistance if you're going to go short or above your trigger bar, your trigger bar high. Now intraday, a little bit different, so important. Place your stop below price bar prior to the trigger bar if you're going to go long. Above price bar prior to trigger bar if you're going to go short. Okay? We're working with a momentum a indicator. We expect this thing is going to move. So there's no reason for you to have a gigantic stop. There is no reason for you to ever, ever, ever expand your stop. This is so simple and yet so difficult to grasp. Now we had this chart up before. Diagonal trend line break. Here's our entry. So we're going to put our protective stop Now I said, you know, b before the trigger bar, but it's the same, same level. So I don't mind putting it where it makes a difference. Now all of a sudden, here's one of my no-go rules. And on TF, you better have no-go rules. If this thing is banging up and down in a two-point range, I don't want to trade it. I want price to resolve the issue. Remember that. Because otherwise, by the time you get enter into the trade, guess what? It turns against you. And then you say, okay, well then we're going to go down. And then it turns against you. And on any oscillator, it's going to play havoc. And it's going to give lots of nice false signals. So just use some common sense here, draw some lines, bracket this, and say, you know what? When price is finished banging up and down here, when price decides to go to work, when price resolves the issue, then I'm ready. Okay? So, I call the first 15 minutes of trading a killing field, and then the markets tend to settle down around 9.45 and uh, some of that is if there's been a gap they want to fill the gap but uh, and then some days it'll just 9.30 boom take right off but more often than not it's very dangerous for the retail trader the first 15 minutes okay alright so here we go diagonal trend line break and you're watching this and well okay and then you see, okay, well, we broke through. Well, guess what? If the trade's going to be good enough, you're going to have another opportunity to get into the trade. Right? So here we are. We come up to uh, the moving average, it looks like. And here we've, as was there where we touched twice. So, boom. This is our trigger bar and we put our protective stop just above the previous bar and that's it forget about it forget about it the other thing I like about working with range bars is I know every single time I enter the trade I know exactly 
how much money I've got at risk. Because each bar represents a hundred dollars. What a comforting feeling. I can quantify my risk on every single trade if I do the exact same thing every single time, right? So we call this a mechanical protective stop automatically. There's no variation. Hey, I entered. Where's my stop? Just above the previous bar high. Okay, how we doing? Looks like we're falling. Now, when you are trading multiple contracts, that guy that you left on there, as price goes down and you might be, you know, taking profits and entering new trades, here you could enter a new trade, and on and on and on, that one guy that you held back, this is the this is the your bragging rights. This is the one that says, Hey, guess what? I put a trade on, my goodness, the whole day. Hmm. It, it, I couldn't believe it. It was just marvelous. Otherwise, if you're more of a scalper type, I'm going to show you some exits, but here you are. Or how many times have you missed the entry because you went to, I don't know, you go to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee or something, or somebody knocks on the door, and then you say, oh, darn it, I missed that. Mm. Well, over here, look what happened. Here's your line showing you an entry, diagonal trend line break. Okay, you're looking at this and saying, well, I have a with the trend trade. With the trend trade. So if this is my trigger, I put my protective stop there and I forget about it. I don't literally forget about it, but I'm not absorbed with it. And the only way you can really get this into your mind is by practice. And then suddenly, one level of stress is taken away because you're not guessing well what if price goes against me what do I do how much should I let it go against me hey if it goes against you boom that's it you know you're down but you're not out all right here we go down here diagonal trend line break so here's our here's our trigger and I'm gonna put the stop uh, just above the trigger bar because it's higher than the previous bar. Well, that makes sense. Okay. All right. And on it, on it goes. So if you are a day trader, I'm telling you, forget about worrying about your entries. You are better served, I believe, on your exit strategy. Okay, so let's talk about exits. Oh, there's many different types. Profit targets. Some people just want to make, okay, if I can make 50 bucks, I'm happy and I'm out of here. I have no problem with people that think that way. Some people say, you know what? I just, I'm trying to trade here while my boss doesn't see me doing this because I'm at work. I got to do quick and out. Some people say, you know, I have a goal to make $1,000 a day. Those are the people I worry about because I've been there and I've done that. And when you're a beginner, I don't know how many times I've seen $700 turn into minus 350 because you are worried too much about the money. You've got to make it mechanical. All right, CCI. Here's a CCI exit. If we have t started turning at the 150 line back toward the zero line, okay, let's say that we were long and we start turning at the 150 line toward zero line. That's our first shot across the bow. That's our first warning. I'll show you an example. Or if we were short and we see the CCI just going and going and going below minus 150 and all of a sudden it crosses that minus 150 back towards zero line, 
That's our first shot across the bow. Hey, something might be not right here. So maybe I ought to watch my profits a little bit. CCI crossing the 100 line. Time to get out. That's time to get out for the scalper. Time to get out for someone who is, um, you know, only want to trade very short periods of time. Nothing wrong with that. If price touches on a pivot point, okay, that's a, for me. That's a that's a signal. That's an exit. Price touches the moving average. Price touches the channel trend line. So you're going to have to look at your charts, become an active participant with price. Okay. And then you're going to have to figure out what speaks to you. Now here's the range bar chart. And oh my goodness, I got so many arrows down there. I don't know what I'd do without arrows and lines. So now we're going to look at the exits. Now granted this is early in the morning here, but um, I want to show you anyway. So here was the entry. And here was the protective stop. Alright? So all of a sudden when we cross the 150, this is our early warning. Our early warning. Hey, something may not be right here. I have hit a bump in the road. Okay? Um, here on this diagonal trend line break here, of course, I'm sorry, to finish the statement, and we would exit completely at the cross of the 100. Now, what about this trade? Diagonal trend line break, so we're going short, right? Anytime you see the CCI flatten like this and start turning up, momentum's leaving the party. And then usually when one of these develops, granted this is overnight, but just in case it happens during the day, you're going to probably have a loss until you see, okay, we're going sideways. And this is one reason why most of my day trading, I, I stop at 11, 11.30, unless I'm in a trade. But the reason I want to stop is because most of the good actions in the morning. Now this is an exceptional day. Wow. All right, let's look at this one. Diagonal trend line break. There's the entry. So we're going down. We go down below minus 150. Everything's just lovely. We come back up, cross the 150. This is our first awareness. Hey, wait a minute. Something could be happening here. And then crossing the 100 line, the, um, this is minus 100, is about right here. So this tells us get out. I mean, we don't know this is going to keep going down, do we? Do you know that? We could go all the way back up here. Now we have another touch, I'm sorry, another entry here. Diagonal trend line break. I see your question, Dave. I'll get to that. We have another diagonal trend line break here. There is our protective stop. So important. And so down here we go. All of a sudden, oh, 150. That's our first shot across the bow. Hmm, maybe I need to watch this. And then all of a sudden we cross the 100. Now, obviously, if you get that kind of a signal and you wait, you have to wait for that price bar to close. You've got to wait for the price bar to close. All right, I, I, I'm getting a, that there's a no volume. Okay. You wait for the price bar to close, and obviously, if it's still the next bar prints down, you know. 
you can stay into the trade. Now let's look over here. Diagonal trend line break gets us in the trade. Protective stop is not a guessing game at all. So now I know, okay, that's $100, that bar. My trigger bar is $100, and then wherever I get in on this next bar, at max, I'm risking $300 at maximum. And then boom, right? It's just too good to be true. Your lucky day. Well, we crossed the 150 line. The minus 150, I should say. What's that mean? First shot across the bow. Be aware. Tighten stops. Wake up. All of a sudden, here we are crossing 100. All right, so we crossed 100. That's around right here. So you get out, and if you just stayed in, you had to run all the way, lost all some of that profit, right? And come back up. Now, it's funny how this thing kept going down because it could have gone straight up. So what these benchmarks do for you is they just keep you on track, right? They just keep you on track. You're being told momentum is leaving the party. Momentum is leaving the party. All right. Diagonal trend line break. Wow, this is a trend trade. We got a good trend going here. I like that. Diagonal trend line break. So go short. Put that protective stop above the trigger because the trigger is a little bit higher than the previous bar. And so boom, down we go. My goodness, another good trade. Yep. All of a sudden, we can't even get to minus 150, start turning back up. Now, hey, that, that means something to us. It means that I rejected a minor support resistance line. This is like another shot across the bow. And then, boom, across the 100. Get out of that trade. Now, anybody who stayed in, you got knocked out because this is just one of those occurrences that can certainly happen. It looks like we're slightly higher here than here. Uh, not to worry. Get back in. Why? Diagonal turn line break. Okay. And on and on and on and on it goes. All right. Here's something else I want to make you aware of. Right here. Bing, 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 bing. As you develop your style. As, and what what is style, by the way? We're talking about your trader instinct. We're talking about your trader intuition. As you develop your trader instinct, and it is a developed uh, gift. It's something you work on. As you develop your style, you can consider managing with a moving average. So for example, my goodness, the 34 EMA has certainly held things nicely today. Okay? Yes, indeed. A couple of hiccups here. Went beyond it. That's fine. Look at all the cash over here. Okay? Is that it? Let me see. What about daily charts? Let's go to work. Diagonal trend line break. We start going down. Diagonal trend line break. Up we go. So on this daily chart, I'm not going to suggest that you have to put the price protective stop below the previous bar get a good signal just put it below your trigger bar especially if it's a big bar like this all right I can 
more than three bars touching here I can extend that line out boom diagonal trend line break up diagonal trend line break up now I want you to point this out I'm not covering the failure swing but when we see a failure swing like this and we know it's a reversal pattern and we see such a strong trend we know hey this is one of those instances we ignore it because any down move is likely short-lived okay and that's just exposure diagonal trend line break well, here and here up we go now notice how we're just being held by these line here just like over here held by the line my goodness held by the line okay so you start anticipating this action you start anticipating well gee if I hit the top I'm gonna likely fall can it really be that simple I think so all right my clients think certainly think so. Now let's talk philosophy here. Momentum traders believe they are in for the long haul taking a series of trades converting to cash quickly. Got it? Momentum traders. Runners, those are your contracts if you've got multiple contracts and you leave one out that's your sacrifice. That's your sacrificial lamb. You're willing to say you know what I'm willing to hold one back and then eventually as price moves certainly you can trail it but don't become obsessed with the your trailing uh, you know your, your your how you trail your stop and all just pull back and look at the big picture okay use that moving average if that'll help you it's very important to trade multiple contracts rather than pin your hopes on a single contract. Now I hate saying this, but if it means you have to uh, build up some capital and then come back, believe you me, the market's going to be here waiting for you. Okay. Otherwise, you've got to start. You, you, I suggest you take numerous hits. I'm sorry about numerous uh, profit hits and just build your account your number one objective and I like to tell people who have been struggling and they come to me and I see what they're doing and the first course of action is usually why don't you become the world's greatest trend trader and after you have achieved that then we can talk about counter trend trades and it's like somebody lifted a ton of bricks off of them if they can keep with the program paper trade these ideas I've talked to you about understand that your ego and mind are at work here and trade with those weaknesses in mind if that's a weakness okay if you have strong ego if you are a command and control type person if that's what you did before you went into trading you're gonna have a tough time because the market is going to command and control you so you've got to learn to go with the flow you've got to practice so the first time I saw this CCI I couldn't believe it and for exactly one year I print my charts off every single day in black and white and I had to get away from the computer because I was there for six or eight hours and with pencil and ruler I drew my lines and I had to prove to myself over and over and over hey this thing works I don't need anything else so you know the reason I became a, a an adult piano student was because of the market I wanted to calm my mind down right in the beginning days the reason I took yoga for six months six days a week I had to calm the mind down 
I think sales and marketing people have a particularly difficult time. You've just got to calm your mind. And uh, like anything else, anything worth having usually requires a little effort. So if you're new to trading, and I know that there's some traders in here from the uh, professionals, and I appreciate you being here. If you're new to trading, keep your trading simple. Block out all of your distractions. Become as mechanical as possible, taking a few setups that prove consistency. All right? You've got to reduce the decision points. That's the secret to the day trading. Forget about the experts. Your goal is to develop you as your own expert. And I don't care what you do. You, you, you read, you take webinars. I'm, I mean, I'm happy to be part of this webinar because I believe in helping traders. Uh, live seminars, coaching, etc., whatever it is, you've got to gain exposure to everything and then select what works best for you. But if you're one of these people, and you go from one, 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 one method to another, and it's always the method's fault, always the market's fault, mm. I think you need to look in the mirror. Bottom line, develop a simple system. Keep an eye on the fundamentals. I'm not saying become absorbed with it, but just be aware of it. Perform your own due diligence. That means you got to do your own studying. Don't, I, I tell you, my own rooster call, okay? When I write that, it's a guide. It's not, I have not been on the mountain and got word above. It's a guide. You've got to develop yourself. If a trader is quoted or an analyst is quoted, chances are they've got an agenda to promote. Not always, but many times. Just remember that. And just commit to trusting yourself. Um, support and resistance, it, a moving average, an oscillator, floor pivots. This is, this is my, this is all I need for the game. Forget about fancy. Forget about this idea that you must spend money on something proprietary because that is going to be like a magic wand. Okay? It's all in your head, most of this. Now, I am ready for your questions. I want to thank you for your patience. I especially want to thank our host, Ice. I really enjoy working with you. Trader Kingdom, I appreciate our relationship. Um, I suggest you go to hitthemarktrading.com, sign up for Rooster Call, it's free. Um, you can follow Hit The Mark Trading on Facebook too. Apparently, uh, every once in a while, I will um, uh, post my trades on there. Not, not uh, before. I give that to the clients. Um, I want to remind you that I do a nightly video Monday through Thursday. I teach these concepts. I do call trades in advance. Like I mentioned before, we're, hey, we're, 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 uh, we're in the bleachers. We're watching and waiting for an opportunity to develop in cotton. Okay? Why? Because seasonally, we tend to turn down in March. So all we want to do is just wait for a technical to come up, okay? If, if the technicals start forming, then guess what? We're in awareness. When coffee started blowing up, we immediately got involved because of an eye on the fundamentals. You can trade coffee, day trade coffee. You can trade options on coffee, okay? Um, so the other thing is this boot camp I understand that these dates are right next week and a lot of you can't make this Asian traders can't make it probably or, or Europeans might not be able to make it it's too late so 
I do record these. It's just like being there. And this is what the web page looks like to give you more information on what the boot camp is all about. Now I want to make a, a mention here of two things. I say six hours. The last boot camp was seven hours because I had a lot of great questions. A lot of people who are so eager and excited about the simplicity. And of course it's more than diagonal trend line break. The other thing I want to mention is um, that's a lot of time for this a little bit of money so I think it's a good value. Just my opinion. I guess I'm biased. Let's go to these questions. All right. Um, do you differentiate between supply and demand versus support and resistance? No, I don't. No, I don't. Um, good question, Gregory. I, I simply want to look at support and resistance and let that be my decision point. So my support and resistance is going to be uh, pivot points, trend lines, and a moving average. Okay. What about the possible touch before the second touch? Um, let's see, David, if you want to remind me what chart we were looking at, I'd love to look it up with you. Yes, Matthew, the session was recorded. Uh, what is the rule for drawing t trend lines? Okay, this will answer a lot of questions. Um, basically, you just want to be able to, to have a, a bump touch. Let me just go back real quick. A bump touch, that sounds like a dance move, doesn't it? What are you doing? I'm doing the bump touch. Okay, so here we are right here. Um, this is 150. Here's our touch. Oh, here's a line. This is 150. Here's our touch. Extend it out. We cross it. Hey, we're trending down, right? So there's our trigger. We broke through. Let the price bar print, please. Let the price bar print. Now, sometimes you're going to get one of these uh, where, um, let me just draw this. You know, like this one right here, it's almost, it's almost a vertical, like an elevator shaft. So I will just run that thing right up the side of it, okay? Maybe that's what you were referring to, Dave, earlier. Okay. Um, you are entering and exiting the same trade. What about commissions? You are entering and exiting the same trade. What about commissions? Um, well, I mean, commissions are always a factor. I'm not... I, to me, the commissions are just part of my, my doing the business. I'm, I'm, if you're working with a broker who is a, uh, a serious trading, trading house, they're going to have competitive commissions. And uh, no, I did not write a, write a book, but I wish I... I wish I could have the, I don't want to say find the time, it's cop out. Why, what do you call the 150 line and what is the significance? Okay. Let's see if I can get back to this. There we go. Oh. Here's the 150 line. Oh, this is a histogram, the CCI histogram. Okay. So the 150 line on the histogram. And the significance is, I want to start drawing the, the trend lines or looking for those other patterns at 150 or higher. Okay? So, if or draw them from minus 150 or lower. So, for example, in these trades here, you know, I'm sloppy, but I'm sorry. Um, 
you know what I'm trying to do here. Let me see. Get, can I get rid of that? I'll do another one. You know, I think if I did one of those genealogical studies, and they said that I was related to Rembrandt, I'd fall out of my chair. Okay, here's a great one. You know, when you got this uh, one two touch, okay, finally break it down. But my main point is. 150s where all the action that we want to start and focus on and other people say well why don't you just draw it from the 100 line um, because you can get some false signals um, just you know trading is a holistic experiment here it really is a holistic practice so you're watching your moving average you're seeing that you are in a trend okay you're seeing that and then you're simply looking for well how can I enter what do I need to enter okay sometimes we make a decision like right here where it's like well I'm close but not quite at 150 minus 150 well you know trader discretion here I mean th this 150 is for for you to start with but uh, obviously if you get that close and you draw a line and you break through it and you see that gosh it doesn't look like the CCI wants to stay up above this line does it okay gosh we're in a big downtrend here right take the trade all right let me go to another one another question are the CCI 20 and 14 common in all markets? Yes, absolutely. And one of the things I forgot to mention is that we're talking about something so robust that this is going to work on any instrument. It's going to work on any time frame. Okay? So I started trading this. TF futures years and years ago using a three minute chart and then a group of guys and us we got together and we dabbled into the auto trading put everything on that we were doing into the auto trading and then what we find is that the three minute chart we're always late you're always late or by the time that uh, you get in the market has done its move and then it starts going down so um, that was the market at that time so that is what really pushed me to an activity based chart rather than saying three minutes or five minutes now I have no problem looking at a 15 minute chart or a five minute chart to the side but I'm not gonna for tactical entry I'm gonna be using an activity based chart you will get in faster I believe okay let's roll down more questions the monthly TF chart you started with there was a potential trend line before I think I think I don't think I showed a monthly I showed a uh, did I? I I think I showed just the weekly there was a potential trend line before the one drawn just want to explore why you didn't draw it I you know I can always tell the committed dedicated traders people who are wanting to learn because they are watching me like a hawk and having excellent questions I love it I find it very rewarding let's look at this now you started there was a potential trend line before the one drawn just wanted to explore why not drawn okay perhaps you might have meant this you could have drawn that absolutely uh, let's see here by the way here was one now this was a trend trade right pop and up and then what happened well now we're going into what might be a trend change right might be a trend change keep in mind we're looking at a weekly chart so alright we bang down here get congested and all this well 
this would be a signal that we're going to go higher. Right, well, if I could draw that a little closer, it should have been down down here. And then um, I can draw this line from here, come here. Okay. And boom. Now, it's difficult for us to really know if this is going to start a new trend or, I mean, what's really going on? So what we like to do is wait. Uh, well, on a weekly, you can't wait. But if this was a, a daily chart or intraday, we're expecting price to come back to the moving average. And then we confirm, okay, yeah, hey, we're going with this. We're starting a new trend here. Okay. Good question. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you for emphasizing to practice paper tray for accuracy. Too many instructors say it's ineffective. Wow. I had a broker told me that uh, paper trading was like kissing your sister. Why do I worry about it? And uh, shortly thereafter, I found another broker. This is back in the days when you placed your trades uh, with a broker for, for commodities. All right. Uh, Stu, thank you very much for the comment. Um, I don't have a book, Roy. You're pushing me now. I'm going to have to write a book. Ken, do you just trade in the direction of 34 May, then use the CCI for timing your entry? You know what? Um, it's one of the things that I teach, yes. Absolutely. Uh, will this presentation be sent to attendees tomorrow? I think that uh, Jim said it was going to be posted tomorrow. Thanks, Martin. How would you draw the trend line break at the hard right edge of the chart to include potential next move up or down? Hmm. Let's go. Daily or weekly? Let's see. Let's just look at the... Uh, well, this is probably the chart we're working off of right here. And by the way, one of the things in this six-hour course, when I say look at the fundamentals, what we do is we look at the correlations in the market. And um, you have to imagine this this gigantic wave of money. Okay? And that's called risk acceptance or risk aversion. So we do our best to make sure that we're riding with that wave. And then we just put the pieces together with the tools we have. So wow, what does that really mean? Well, it means that over here in February, um, we launched a rash of trades, right? Because we just come up, done a pullback, and so February 10, a huge amount of option trades. And uh, that's about the time everything else started popping up. Everything. Everything. So I study these correlations. And I just, uh, I love it because it's it demonstrates the power of all these algorithmic programs working. And they're all doing the same thing. And they're all using an anchor. And we don't need to know the details. But what we do need to be able to do is read their footprints. Okay. Uh, is there a way to get 34 MA that changes colors and has the angle of 34 MA? Any suggestions to relax and get out of my head? <laughs> um, that's the uh, that's the trader cross we have to bear, Don, until we finally relax. And it it usually comes with reaching a point of immense pain, unfortunately. Here you see I've got the EMA angle on this chart. And by the way, I have this template for I give it to the clients. Uh, for either Trade Navigator, Trade Station, um, Ninja Trader, or um, I think there might be one other one I have. So I, I do not believe in nickel and diming the templates, but I do believe that um, uh, if people pay the money, that I should should uh, help them as much as I can. Getting to relax and out of my head 
um, I know you've heard this a million times, but that, that whole idea about meditation or just some kind of relaxation. I know a father and son trading team, and uh, they go into the visualization thing. They, they just they visualize the trading day before they start. What time frame would you recommend trading intraday? I, on the TF, this is what I do, the 10 bar range chart. That's what I do. I've done the 512 chart for years. For years. So 512 is good. But I do the 10 range bar chart. Um, remember, your CCI is going to go to 14, okay, on a smaller time frame. But uh, I like the 10 range bar because the Russell 2000 is going to move and I already know hey if I don't if I can't move if I don't see price move in uh, more than a two-point range two hundred dollars I'm this is your chop zone right this is your area where death of a thousand cuts so you've got to after you get cut so many times you realize to avoid the fire right avoid the knife so I'm just I, I do everything on the 10 range bar um, and, I, and that seems to work well for me. Erica, so happy you're feeling well. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, good value for me. She's talking about the boot camp. Thank you. Is there any options training in the boot camp? Jerry, um, I have a separate options training. I do call option trades. Yes, I do call option trades, but as far as what is a put, what is a call, what is a spread, what is a non-directional trade, as far as that kind of mechanic discussion, no. I, I, um, that, I, I, I broke down and I did a session on that, another six hours deal, and it is the most approachable look at options that I think I mean it's the kind of course I wanted if I wanted to learn myself okay because believe you me I, I started and uh, the next thing you know I'm following somebody a friend a friend and uh, then you find out the friend can't follow his own rules so uh, I wanted to make things very simple because people become so intimidated at the word options they really do they really do. I missed the first 10 minutes of the webinar. Perhaps you can go over the entry rules. Wait for the recording, John. It's in detail. How do you get Rooster Call? There's no link on the website. Jack, there is. Um, go to the contacts page. Put your name in there under the uh, on the contacts page for web updates, something like that. And um, you'll get the opportunity when you fill that out to get the rooster call nope okay I guess you're talking about the monthly chart I honestly don't think I showed a monthly chart today I'm gonna you know maybe you're right it wouldn't surprise me let's let's look at the weekly All right, 15 daily, weekly. I did not do a monthly chart. Okay. Let's see here. For CCI, what period daily and intraday? On the daily, use a 20 period CCI. Okay. On a period 60 minutes and above 20 CCI. There are several methods to calculate pivot points that are different. All right, they give a different R1 to S3. Which one do I use? Well, that's a great question, Carl. Um, I use the old pivot point that Floor Trader started with. And um, all of your, your charting packages have the pivot points 
One of the things I do in Rooster Call is I'm going to list the pivot points for the ES and, and uh, the Euro. I do that. And basically, the, um, the floor pivots were first created, and then people want to put a little tweak here and a tweak there, and then they want to attach their name to it. The reason the floor pivots are working and still work to this day, these pivot points, is because they have been put into all of the trading programs, all the algorithms. The algorithms are what's moving the markets, not individual people like you and I. So um, the algorithms are, are using, I believe, the original uh, floor pivot calculations. Okay. And by the way, if you see a floor pivot calculation and it's not quite exactly 100% as mine, that could be due to uh, the data feed cutoff. It could be due to uh, the data feed filtering. The main thing is that they're close. Okay. Do you only trade in the direction of a longer term trend? That depends on what type of trade we're doing. Um, guest your name is guest six it depends on the what kind of trade we're doing okay um, I mean I'll take counter trends in day trading I'll take trend trades and counter trends in day trading if I have a trade that says hey I need to go short here and it matches up with the day chart and that matches up with a week chart I know that I've got pretty good strength behind me all right. Um, how do you, the histogram and Ninja Trader? Um, I'm a, I'm not the best on the Ninja Trader. Okay. I still have a hard time drawing lines in real time. Any more tips, Erica? Let me send you a video I did, and I think I told you I was going to do this of of uh, of day trading, and it's a live deal, and you'll see how the lines are done real time. Okay. I do not have a uh, day trading room. Oh, the name of the book I recommended at the beginning of the program. Oh, John Murphy, Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets. But that book, uh, Roy, only has maybe one page of the CCI in it, just one page. So not a lot of discussion because he's trying to address a lot of indicators. I suggest you go to the library and let them order the book for you or go to a bookstore and look for it there okay but if you just want to research that I do not recommend you buy the book that's a great book great book but um, I uh, don't buy the book just for that good one Mark all right Michael where can we access your recordings of past market analysis? Um, I have done some other webinars through Trader Kingdom. You can look at that. Deep. I love the name. Deep. Will this strategy work on tick charts as well as, say, uh, TF500 ticks? Yes, yes, yes. What is the best time frame you use? I like the 10 range bar. I'm not holding anything back here. I love the 10 range bar chart. I love it. Okay. Before that, the 512 tick, I like that too. I don't use it anymore, but I like that. The reason I like the uh, 10 range bar chart is because it helps me to quantify my risk and quantify, you know, price is showing me it's moving. October. I've lost it, David. I don't know. October. That's a cryptic message to me. Okay. October. Let's see. Bueller. Hi, please name the indicator. Commodity Channel Index. Yeah, you're right, Carl. Brokers do not get paid for paper trades. Uh, the book by John Lambert. Uh, no, John Murphy. Please go over us later again. Thank you, Jim. 
<laughs> you're gonna have to watch the recording uh, let's see here CCI is in different name in your webinar why is it so I, um, I just customized it can you show how to draw the trend line break on the 10 range bar chart you didn't answer the question all right didn't answer the question was I being evasive hmm was there an agenda here <laughs> no worries I'll draw these lines as much as you want me to draw them now how do you draw the trend line break on the 10 range bar chart I, I, I want this bump here so alright here's a bump here so let's draw this thing it looks like this kind of moved a little bit but alright whoops going touching that I want to touch that okay well that's it I, I touched it here I you just want to touch the CCI it's kind of like a battering ram okay it's like boom I tried I can't I came back boom I tried I came I came back boom, I broke through that's significant do not overthink this John and that's what we always do it's a good question you had but we always overthink this business always all right now let's say that we use trader discretion and we say well we're not quite at 150 but by golly I can I can draw a line down here like this come here please all right and then it's like well I already know the 34 MA is kind of holding things in tight. Do I really want to take that counter trend trade? Do I really want to take that trade and then get all upset with myself and upset with the guy that introduced me to CCI and say, "Well, this, you know, this is not working." What's he talking about? No, you got to this is a holistic practice trading is. And, and if you're looking for a set of rules that, that is going to just work 100% of the time, nothing does. I can say this, though. Your paper trading should show you on your own no more than two losses in a row, but you have to prove that on paper yourself. Okay. It's, it's you're the trader in command can one trade options using your methodology absolutely we do it absolutely Ken thanks also do you look at a higher time frame to see the trend first so if trend is up on daily look to make trade on four hour less um Boy, a lot's been said about those four-hour charts, especially uh, Forex traders absolutely love four-hour charts. So there's got to be something to it. I just don't look at it. Um, what I'll basically do is I'm going to look at every single night. I'm going to look at the daily. I'm going to look at the weekly. I'm going to see where's my trend, what's going on. If markets are totally not doing anything or looking like we could be... Uh, uh, getting close to our channel line and are we gonna fall or something like that then I want to know well what are the institutions looking at and that's the only time I might put up a 50 uh, moving average just to see what they're looking at and that's one way to also look at the bigger trend and that's a 50 simple but uh, I don't keep that on the chart because I want the charts as clean as possible but more to your point I'm gonna be looking after the daily I'm gonna be looking at the uh, 15 minute chart and uh, or the five minute and I'm gonna be drawing my lines so if if this was a fresh chart for me let's say this was four o'clock or into the market day I would draw this line just like this to prepare myself okay and I would say okay what's going on here I got a nice trend here beautiful trend so I would be saying that the price is going to probably move up here 
and if we exceed this we're going to go to the floor pivot and if we break down price has a strong attraction because we've got this uh, um, uh, pivot point and this line uh, keep in mind that we would be looking at tomorrow's pivots the, at the, after the uh, after they print so not today as we'd be looking at tomorrow's pivot but we still could draw our lines and uh, we can already form a game plan okay well if we break up to the top we're gonna come to the floor pivot if we break out to the bottom we're gonna go to the nearest floor pivot how simple is that what do you think is the ideal time period for trading um, it depends on your instrument Sam so it depends really on your instrument I know uh, a guy that gets up every morning he's at his desk at five o'clock to catch a move in currencies um, because they tend to move at five o'clock if there's reports out of Europe okay um, so he's gonna be his ideal time is gonna be uh, really early in the morning um, in if you're following the Russell 2000 I think the ideal time is you, you know you're looking at your desk be, uh, before the market opens you're drawing your lines you're getting all set up you're looking at CCI you're glancing at some fundamentals you're looking at the daily chart you're looking at the weekly you're reminded where we're going if we're going anywhere and then you're the market opens at 930 I prefer as just me to let that first 15 minute pass like I said that can be a killing field um, obviously if there's some kind of good news or something they might they might run it up right on the open but the day trader knows there will be other opportunities to get into the trade so um, 945 things tend to settle down uh, gotta be aware of 10 o'clock because of economic reports and 230 and all right then at 11 if I'm done for the day I'm done for the day if I'm in a trade I'll stay at 230 in the afternoon we tend to see a move okay so that means you start looking at 215 so l let's make a window between 215 and 245 but let's say more often than not it's a 230 move okay and listen that has held for years all of your examples are in the past well I don't know any other way to teach can you tell me John if you would send me an email how else can I teach all examples are in the past that's how you teach man that's how you teach um, I call trades in advance and I don't do a trading room because that's going to distract me from the trading all examples are in the past I'm gonna let that one go they don't show how to use this technique at hand right hard right into the chart please show an example I um I have shown you example after example after example nothing I'm doing over here is any different than what I'm doing over here it really isn't you're overthinking this honestly I appreciate the question and I appreciate your attendance but you're gonna have to on your own maybe watch this again and practice I told you I did this for a whole year printing the chart out at the end of the day to prove to myself this thing worked a lot of people don't have that type of perseverance to the craft but I it, it spoke to me because it was so simple and it worked and you put this on a daily chart and you put this next to stochastics and you put this next to anything else you want and you're gonna see it works on that too all right do you have a book of all the stuff and of the courses um, I do have a course it's on the website Fram um, and I do have a uh, a uh, getting started guide to help you 
for day trading what are the minimum ranges you'd recommend for the CL well um, we're really here to talk about the TF so um, drop me an email do you do you trade ES uh, 10 range as well I do um, some people will go to 8 I have no problem with that do you have a trade room unfortunately no deep um, I, I just uh, I don't see how I can charge people for uh, a couple hours in the day and the reason I don't sit all day long is because I've done that I've been there done that so after I do the day trading I switch over and I manage option trades how did you ever use trend lines for determining momentum uh, the CCI is your momentum indicator the trend lines is frames the price action and the trend is defined by the exponential moving average what time zone on your charts it's uh, Eastern Standard Time Jerry you're welcome uh, weekly August October here we go um, the Trader Kingdom guys uh, I'll be here as long as you want me to let me know if there's uh, anything change otherwise I'm happy to answer these questions weekly August through October okay well here's August through October here okay weekly August through October here okay now of course I've forgotten the question let's see October th August through October here are we talking about the trend lines again let's see here on a weekly chart you gotta remember the weekly chart is only for observation right only for observation what is the big picture the bigger tide doing and once a month I look at the monthly chart okay once a month um, but we're not going to do a tactical entry off the weekly chart this the weekly chart is the swing traders chart so what I would suggest on the weekly chart is that you look for traditional patterns and marrying it up to the uh, the commodity channel index okay um, and of course using the 34 exponential moving average but um, drawing the trend line let me see I drew that trend line there so that's uh, August to October this here is a failure swing which I did not discuss today I know it looks like heck over here but basically you, uh, you have a low you come up you fail to make a uh, 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 you fail to go higher you draw your line across you go down you fail to go lower make a new low so you come back up and the trigger is you take along here so boom up we went to the moving average now price is trying to decide what the heck am I doing here that's what's trying to decide here so if you're looking at something like this I would always be having my lines on price absolutely okay a lot of people would say well here this is a this continuation pattern and we're gonna go down that's that's traditional right flag pattern continuation pattern right but um, I would want to say what was the action prior to this and is this just a dip down and are we gonna resume the trend I don't know if I confused or helped or not David you're free to write me an email and uh, I'll respond to you okay let's go let's go let's go uh, Carl um, I trade the ES does the 10 range bar work well it does and also uh, like I mentioned earlier some people will trade the 8 so if you're new to this I would trade or, or study both my own practice I use the 10 okay but the 8 is perfectly acceptable okay you're welcome Erica 
Amazon for that book uh, by John Murphy. Uh, for books, go to TradersLibrary.com. Okay. Um, David, I'm sending a vid Eric is a client, and I am uh, a new client. So I'm going to send a video of her uh, to her of uh, of a um, day trading session that I videotaped live has the clock there everything um let's see here were you ever with woody um i started there yeah and uh, taught in the stock room but uh, had some differences and i decided i wanted to get into more of uh, mentoring and simplify and and uh, what i wanted to simplify and relate was not uh, according to uh, the Woody style, so that's why I bowed out. Let's see. You're welcome, Doug. I'm glad for that. Excellent presentation. Filled in the gaps in my use of CCI. Appreciate that. Can you recommend number bars for other markets? You know what I've done? Um, I use 10 range bar for everything except for corn and I will use a, a 5 on corn everything else is 10 sugar 10 John you're welcome I appreciate the comments and I appreciate your your, uh, your questions I really do okay um, does this work on Forex absolutely you know I had uh, at one time several Czech Republic traders so every once in a while I'd throw up that Czech uh, the uh, what's that currency called the their currency in the US dollar it works on everything can you say what this is can you say what is the MA I E M A M A I don't know what that means what is the name of your website for joining your boot camp? Um, HitTheMarkTrading.com uh, Jim, great info. I appreciate that. Do you trade for a living or just teach? That's a great question. I trade for a living. And that's why I don't see how a person can operate a trading, a trading room and uh, answer questions and all that live and then trade. TF means time frame? No, TF is the symbol for the Russell 2000. Great presentation this you're doing. Thank you, Deep. That was deep. Thank you. This has been a great webinar. Thank you, Guest 6. All right. Why don't you use the zero line cross for entry? Um, you know, Wang, if you. Uh, you can certainly use that, but um, I prefer the diagonal trend line break. Any, as long as I can draw that diagonal trend line break, that's all I'm really worried about. But keep in mind, I'm watching. It's a holistic process here. It's 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 watching that price and the moving average too. Would you please define your trailing stop loss on daily bars? Yeah, just um, on daily bars. If you get the trigger bar put your stop just if you're going short put it just above the trigger bar if you're gonna go long put it just below okay all right you're welcome Smithson what do you think is the max time one should trade and take a break I think that uh, it's up to the individual but you do not want to get caught in the lunchtime so many times that market just stops and uh, all the action is just like in when I used to live in Chicago everybody hits the road at the same time you want to be in there when the the rush hour is so 
I would say make it a point definitely be there uh, the first hour and a half absolutely required first two hours um, if you're trading other instruments I mean we you know they have their rules too but for the Russell 2000 the TF you would want to do a 930 to uh, 11 932 1130 uh, thank you, Smithson. Okay, okay. You mentioned zero line as strong support and resistance, and some very good trades come from zero line rejects and cross recrosses as reentry reentry re into trend. Uh, you're exactly right, Chuck. Uh, no argument from me there. Um, and when I can draw a diagonal trend line, I'm going to take that trade. Thank you. This is from Don. Thank you, Martin. I'm always a better trader after listening to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Does this work on tick charts as well? Yes. You're welcome, Roy. Okay, uh, Raj Kumar, you're welcome. Dave? Good. Appreciate it. You created the chart and your strategy test. Good. You're welcome, Roy. What is your next live boot camp? Well, I've got one next week, and then I'm not sure when the next one will be. Um, I typically only hold uh, a few a year, but anytime I do a webinar, I, I'll throw a boot camp together because i got so much interest. So I would say there's probably going to be one, I don't know, in a couple of months or something. But the beauty of these recorded sessions, you can get recorded sessions, it's, it's just like being there and you have constant reference to it. Okay, what are parameters for moving average in CCI? 34 exponential moving average. CCI 14 on any time period below 60 minutes. 20 above. It is a good webinar. Thank you, guest two. GM, thank you. What's your view on trailing stops? Um, I uh, I have so many clients that get stopped out prematurely. So I ask them to try to manage off that moving average. Lived in Wheaton, many Wheaton is a beautiful town. I lived in uh, Glendale Heights and I lived in Oak Brook Terrace. And then I went to the city. What is the content? of your next boot life camp. It, they're always the same. They're always the same. Always the same. Always. And the option boot camp is to teach you the mechanics of option trading. Fred, I'm sorry, I was referring to the trailing stop loss, not the initial stop loss in daily bars. So would you please define how do you define a trailing stop loss on a daily bars or do you simply wait for another exit signal? Okay. Um, you know what I do Fred is when you get into a, a swing trade on a daily chart it's I'm going to be managing it off the CCI and uh, that means just exactly what I showed you here also managing it off of the uh, on the daily chart now I'm going to be drawing horizontal trend lines for measuring support and resistance lines. So for example we called a trade the other day in rooster call uh, but I had called it the previous night and I said now look here you know I normally don't believe in getting into the overnight Globex market but the Australian dollar was ready to roll and so there was a support line that was going to be hit so aggressive traders could enter that trade and boom it hit it and then uh, it, it went it went back up but uh, it, it hit the initial profit target so trade one contract you're in and out trade multiple you took some and then uh, uh, you were out uh, when the market started going against you and we saw that day before yesterday okay do you have any DVI I can buy no DVD but I record the videos they're hosted on the web on the cloud whatever and you can access that anytime you want do you trade currencies if yes what range bar euro 10 range bar and uh, 
I like the euro. Are the options you trade weekly options? Uh, no, they are mainly uh, front month options. Um, we found a stock below book value recently and we jumped into that with leaps. So we got two years, two years for this thing to do something. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a basic industry. So, um, but mainly we're using front month options. I'm going to get more into the weekly, but um, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm more drawn to working with the front month options. I think that's all, everything. So I appreciate all the questions, a ton of questions. I'm going to hand this over back to Bob or back to uh, uh, Josh. And I want to thank you all for coming. I appreciate it very much. And uh, um, send me an email, GM, and I'll tell you how to get into Rooster Call. Deep, you're most welcome, and I appreciate your comments. I'll talk to you guys later. Everyone, thank you so much.